Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to this video. This video is a full review of this AOC 24 inch 1080p IPS monitor, but I say this one, there's three of them. And if you want to know more about what it's like to have three of them, you can click just here, and then that will take you to the video that will go through what it's like to have three of these in a triple monitor setup for gaming and general purposes. But if we look at the monitor market at the moment, of course there are so many different monitors, but at they're all kind of a bit high-end. There aren't really that many that offer good performance at an entry-level price. But then this is where this particular monitor comes in. It's 24 inches, it's 1080p, and it has an IPS panel. And a few years ago, this really would have been top spec. Well, I say a few years ago, we are talking a few years ago now, but the point is it looks at offering really good performance without too much of an outlay. So is it a good monitor, and should you be buying one? So let's take a proper look at what this thing actually is. It's a 24 inch IPS monitor with really slim bezels. Now it's only 1080p, but that just means that it's not going to be as sharp as some of the Quad HD or UHD 4K panels. It's only 24 inches though, so this doesn't make too much difference. It just means it's no longer cutting edge tech. It's just 1080p. But the main thing really is that it uses an IPS panel. An IPS panel is of course an in-plane switching panel, which means you're gonna get better color accuracy and better viewing angles. IPS panels are more commonly used in phones and some high-end TVs. So essentially it's a really good panel type and it's better than TN. So you're going to get better viewing angles and better color accuracy in quite a cheap price point. Now, the monitor itself, once you get it out of the box, is really easy to assemble. Simply attach the stand to the monitor. I say this every time because it really is very simple. Uh, all you need is a screwdriver, or you can do it by hand actually with this particular one, but I would advise you using a screwdriver. And then here's the main problem that I actually have with this monitor. It looks pretty good, no problems there. It's a bit plasticky, uh, but it's a budget monitor, so again, no real problems there but the monitor doesn't have any height adjust, it only has tilt. Now, it has a visa mount, so for most people, you can just go out and you can get a separate stand or a dual monitor stand, a triple monitor stand, six monitor stand, whatever you want, and then you can do away with this problem. But if you are literally just going to buy this monitor as is, then on my desk, it, to be honest, it's not actually that comfortable to use because I want to be able to use my rests on my chair, which means I need to have uh, my chair at the same sort of height as my desk. And then it means the monitor's all the way down there, so I'm essentially looking down at a screen, which a lot of us do, but really you should be looking at a monitor which is sort of eye level, and it's a pain that this doesn't have height adjust, but it is fairly easily remedied with a third-party stand. Plugging this monitor in, you can use DisplayPort, you can use HDMI, or you can use VGA if you really want. Uh, there isn't any uh, DVI here, but you can use a converter if you need to. Setting it up is actually quite simple because I found that this monitor doesn't go that bright, which to be honest, I kind of like because I think most monitors are way too bright these days. And uh, if you set this monitor to the sRGB setting, then as usual, which is a shame, it goes to max brightness, which isn't that bright. So I've just left it on the sRGB setting and things are very good out of the box if you do it like that. If you don't adjust any settings out of the box though, it still looks very good, and that IPS panel really does shine through. Viewing angles are very good. They're not as good as some more expensive monitors, of course, but that and the color accuracy is very good. I was going through and editing some photos, so that's the sort of product productivity side of it, and things looked very, very good. And if you do want to use three of them, the slim bezels means that there really aren't that many gaps between the monitors, and it's a very seamless experience. If you want to use this thing for general use, then there's not too much to say about it. Everything's just gonna work and things are gonna look pretty good because there's no image scaling needed because it's only a 1080p panel and everything is kind of designed for 1080p panels. So it's gonna be pretty uneventful really and there's not too much to say. If you want to use this thing for gaming though, I have to say it has been a very responsive experience, which is something that you don't always get with IPS panels because the response times are higher than the gaming TN panels that you can get. I've been playing some Battlefield 4, been playing some Titanfall, played some Witcher on it, played some Batman on it, and I had a good experience on all of them. No problems whatsoever. 
Even at only 60 hertz, I was still able to play Battlefield 4 successfully and get some kills, which I'm so used to using a 120 hertz panel is actually quite a commendable thing, but maybe that's just because I'm so good at Battlefield 4. Those of you who watch the casual play will know that's definitely not the case. And with that, that brings us to the conclusion. And you might be thinking, well, there's quite a lot of stuff you haven't really said about the monitor. But to be honest, that's because there's no sort of standout features about it, other than the fact that it's available at a really, really good price. And if I was going to get a monitor, maybe for a secondary PC, or if I was going to, say, recommend a monitor for something like my parents or something like that, then really, this is very, very good. And if I was going to get into gaming tomorrow and I didn't have any experience, I really think this is a very good place for you to start. It offers great picture quality at the 60 hertz that we all know and love, and if you're coming from consoles, it's probably higher than what you're used to anyway, and it's available at a great price. And of course, you can always upgrade later, and maybe you want a 1080p 24-inch panel, and then you could go and get another one dedicated to gaming or something like that later, if you find that it's not enough for you. So, can I recommend this monitor? Of course. And that is why it wins the Top Purchase Award, because if you want a monitor at this price, this really is the thing to go for. And my main advice, not just for this monitor, but for anyone that wants to buy an entry-level monitor, literally spend that extra 20, 30 pounds, or 40, 50 dollars, and get an IPS panel, not a TN panel, because it makes all the difference, and trust me, you really won't regret it. Thank you so much for AOC for actually getting this monitor, or I should say these monitors out. Like I say, if you want to know what it's like to have three of them, you can find that video again here, and then you can see what it's like to have gaming on a triple monitor set up with very slim bezels. So thank you so much for watching this video as always. If you liked it, give it a like. If you thought it was crap, likewise give it a dislike, hit the crap button. Um, and for other videos like this, of course, don't forget to subscribe to PC Centric for more things like this. Any questions about this monitor or anything else, at PC Centric on Twitter is the place to ask me. And like I say, for any other videos, then just stick with the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video as always, and I'll see you in the next one.